This is 12.5, lines and planes in space. So when we see the word space in math, we don't think about, well, you can't think about rocket ships, but what we really mean is n-dimensional space. So when we see the word space, we mean Euclidean space, Euclidean n-dimensional space. So space will be Rn. That's a, another name for n-dimensional space, Rn. We're mostly going to be in R3, occasionally in R2. We probably won't be in R4, 5, or 6, but uh, what I'm showing you, as long as there's no cross product, it works in n-dimensional space. What dimension do you have to be in for anything with cross product? Three-dimensional space. So you've got to be in three dimensions to have a cross product. So let's start with an uh, equation for a line. So everything I show you will be Rn, except when we start writing cross products, then we cannot be in any dimension but three. So I'm gonna write the good old days line, we're in uh, R2. So our function was f of x, if I write it like that. All right, mx plus b. So this is one way to think about your line in two-dimensional space. We are going to have these two pieces. We're going to have a slope, and we're still going to have a, instead of calling this a y-intercept, I'm going to call it an initial point. If you really want to use slope-intercept, your initial point's always on the y-axis. It's the y-intercept. That won't be the case with us. In fact, in three dimensions, your line doesn't have to go through any axis in particular. It can miss all the axes completely. So I'm just going to just think about it as slope and initial point. So that's the intuition that we need for thinking about lines in higher dimensions. So in Rn, slope tells you the direction the line goes. So in n-dimensional space, if I want to point in a direction, what do we call that? Something that has a direction. Vector. So our slope's going to be a vector now. It's going to tell you the direction. So it will uh, be a vector. You want to make sure this vector is not zero, or you're not going to have a direction. And when I say not zero, I mean not the zero vector. So it's got to have some uh, direction to it. All right, so that's our slope. And our initial point will be uncreative and call it P0. P for point, zero for initial. So that'll be our initial point. We are going to parameterize this with a T value. I don't want to parameterize with an X value because x won't necessarily correspond directly to our parameter changing. So we're going to parameterize it with a t value. We are dealing with a line, so we will usually think about the infinite line, meaning from negative infinity time to positive infinity time. So the line goes forever both directions. So I'm going to draw what this line will look like. We have some point P0 and some vector V. That's our slope. And of course, it can go any amount in that direction. So it goes forever there and forever negative there, like that. So there's our line right there. I'm going to use the book notation uses R of T. I like to use L of T for line of T, but we'll go with what the book uses. 
So we're going to write the initial point plus the direction times time right there. And if you want to go back to parametric equations, that's exactly what we created right here. So if we're in three dimensions, uh, our vector v has three components. We'll go v1, v2, v3. And p0 we'll call x0, y0, z0 for the initial x, y, z coordinates. I'm writing p as a point and v as a vector. Turns out there's no difference between a point and a vector, it's just how you treat them. They each contain the same number of coordinates and it's just how you're thinking about those three or four or two coordinates. So R of T will be X zero, Y zero, Z zero, plus V T. So it'll be V one, V two, V three, times the scalar T. And we'll go ahead and multiply and add at the same time. We'll get x0 plus tv1, comma, y0 plus tv2, comma, z0 plus tv3. So that is parametric equation of the line. So our first example, I strongly recommend you use the first more simple equation mainly because it doesn't depend on the number of dimensions you're in and it's also a lot less space it's going to take up on your cheat sheet. So use that first equation I wrote down there. How many points do you need to define a line? Two. You need some initial, some final point. Now in a line, it's going to go past in both directions. But I'm going to talk about how to actually stay between those two points if you want. So find vector equation of a line from, we'll go from P minus 2, 0, 4 to Q. 0, 1, negative 1. All right, what's our initial point? Should we choose P or Q, the way I wrote the question? P, so we'll choose from as our initial. So P naught is going to equal P minus 2, 0, 4. How do I get V? the slope. So we're always going to n minus start. So for us, it's going to be q minus p. And we compute that out. So we have our P naught and our V. We're ready to write down R of T equals P naught plus V T. So there is our parameterized equation of the line. So I could put in all t values between negative infinity and positive infinity, but I want to be a little more specific right here. Let's draw a nice little graph of p naught and v. And if I want this 
to end at Q, of course, P naught is P. Let's figure out what is R of zero. I'm gonna plug in zero for T. R of zero, it should be pretty clear, is just P naught. You're gonna add zero times V, so it's adding nothing to P naught, and you get P naught. Now I'm gonna do R of one. R of one is P naught plus V times one, or just P naught plus V. Now, where did V come from? V, I'm gonna use V equals Q minus P right there. So V equals Q minus P. And P naught is P. So I'm just subbing in P naught is P, V is Q minus P, and P minus P cancels. R of one is Q. So if we let T go from zero to one, what we've done is parameterize a line only between P and Q, starting at P, ending at Q, and the graph of it would look exactly like this right here. So this is the T equals zero, and up here would be T equals one, and if you want to orient it, you can add an extra arrow in the middle, so it's going directly from P to Q, going this direction. What if I want to have the exact same line, but opposite direction, Q to P? I could recompute everything. That would be one option. Let's think if we, how do I turn time backwards? I basically make it negative. Let's think about if we just go ahead and made it negative. So I'll call this uh, maybe R1 of T. Let's just try P naught plus V negative T. That's P naught minus or plus negative V T. That's another way algebraically to write that. So let's draw out what this would be. We're gonna start at P naught. Here's Q. What direction is our, is our slope going P naught to Q? It's going the opposite way. So here, our slope would actually go that direction, right there. And where would our line end? At time one, it would end down there. That's not really what I want, though. So what we're gonna do, instead of just making negative t, I wanna put something in here. It's going to have a negative t in it, but what I really want is the line that starts at Q and ends at P, or P naught. So that right there is one second, and T went from zero to one. What I wanna do is rewind it a second. I want the previous second. So I want it to go from negative one to zero instead. So I want the second before the one that I drew on the board. So the way we do that, we have to turn T backwards. So we definitely want negative T. And what we do is we go, oops. The way I think about it is one minus T. Yikes. One minus T. So when T is zero, you're at the old one second. And when T is one, you're at the old zero second. So that right there will reverse the direction the line goes and start it back at Q. So that's how to parameterize in reverse, but starting at the end, going back to the start right there. Um, so I'll just erase that.